Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books, and I've been covering Warner Brothers Discovery pretty closely these last several months, made more than a hundred videos based on what they've been doing, and my enthusiasm for Warner Brothers Discovery is twofold. One, I do respect the management team a lot. I like what their focus is. I like how they've operated in the past at their prior company. However, primarily, I love to see competition in the marketplace because you've got this agenda that has strangled intellectual properties, whether it's Marvel, Disney, Lord of the Rings, this agenda that has decided, no, we need to destroy everything that came in the past and you need to take this new forced version of this woke ideological takes on famous brands, which basically means they're wiping away the old brands and you're going to need to eat whatever they're cooking you up with the new brands. Well, Warner Brothers Discovery is focused not on ideology. They're focused on free cash flow, making money. Just so that you know, in their most recent quarterly report, they generated $2.48 billion in free cash flow, up from an estimated around $737 million that was projected that they would generate. They generate money and they focus on money and they focus on pleasing people who are fanatics about their brands. So now Warner Brothers Discovery has created some panic in the industry at Hollywood because they've announced they're going to be making new Lord of the Rings movies in competition with Amazon's woke Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. How is this all gonna play out? Well, there are a couple of articles that we're gonna go over. The first article comes from Hollywood Reporter, and then we're gonna talk about Amazon's reaction to the announcement, where they claim, hey, no big deal, there's plenty of Lord of the Rings for everybody. They are in a panic over at Amazon because they know they are not pushing things that fans like when it comes to Lord of the Rings. They are pushing their own ridiculous agenda, destroying the original franchise, as opposed to what Zaslav is doing, where he's saying he's quartering Peter Jackson to be involved in his new Lord of the Rings franchise because he wants it to actually be good. Let's get into the first article. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications and give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate you guys. Lord of the Rings, Amazon, and Warner Brothers ready for token battle. The David Zaslav led studio hopes to woo back Peter Jackson for more installments. But as Amazon bets big on its $1 billion series, Insiders worry that Tolkien's franchise isn't big enough for two rival visions. One crappy vision, one good vision. I wonder which one is worried. When Amazon debuted its highly anticipated, most expensive TV series ever made, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power last fall, the company had to contend with a bothersome rival from Warner Brothers Discovery, the Game of Thrones prequel, House of the Dragon. Warner's picked the debut date for its prestige TV drama 12 days before Amazon's $1 billion gamble launch, ensuring nonstop media and fandom comparisons, many of which were less favorable to the family-friendly rings. For Amazon, the head-to-head -head rivalry was all the more galling because Warner's is a minority licensee stakeholder in rings. So they're ostensibly supposed to be on the same side. Team Ring's public spin concerning the matchup went like this. None of this matters because these shows are totally different. All of which made the February 23 announcement by Warner's almost Westeros level brutal. Now the studio is going back to make the Lord of the Rings content too. As Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav declared in the company's earnings call, Warner Brothers and New Line Cinema made a multi-year deal with Embracer Group to make the new Lord of the Rings movies. The reveal comes at a precarious time for Warner's with the studio admitting to a $2.1 billion loss in the fourth quarter. Let me explain this because it's a narrative nonsense from Hollywood Reporter. The reason that Warner Brothers Discovery lost $2.1 billion is not because they actually lost cash out of their pockets. They canceled off a bunch of garbage like Batgirl they didn't want. So when Warner Brothers Discovery says, hey, we're not going to produce Batgirl, that's immediately $90 million of loss. But they canceled over a billion dollars worth of, frankly, garbage projects that the prior management approved. In addition to other layoffs, the loss that Warner Brothers Discovery announced of $2.1 billion for the fourth quarter is completely irrelevant in terms of their finances, except to say that they have this massive tax break they can take now. Like many studios, the company seems to be circling its wagons even tighter around familiar IP, focusing on surefire brands like DC. Though there are no scripts yet, 
One insider suggests to The Hollywood Reporter that Warner Brothers hopes to turn Lord of the Rings into a Star Wars-like franchise. The move comes two decades after director Peter Jackson's hugely popular The Lord of the Rings saga, which won 17 Oscars. Now Jackson and his writing partners are the precious talent Warner hopes to get on board with its efforts after Amazon seemingly fumbled its courtship of the filmmaker. Jackson told The Hollywood Reporter that Amazon had reached out to him about the series, but then after the company's executive shakeup, he was never sent any scripts. So Amazon just blew him off because they don't need his input. They know what their agenda is. It has nothing to do with what Peter Jackson did with Lord of the Rings. Sources say Jackson and Walsh were very frustrated. So many believed they were involved with Amazon's show and are now engaging with Warner's new line, curious as to how they'll be stewards of the J.R.R. Tolkien's legacy. The deal making was sparked by Embracer taking over Middle Earth's enterprises from the Sol Zayance company last fall, which gave the Swedish video game company the adaption rights to the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit books. That was approximately like a $2 billion deal the actual number was never published. They agreed to keep it secret with the Saul Zance people. That's just how they did. The takeover stemmed from a lawsuit between Zance and Warner Brothers over whether the studio was fulfilling its development obligations to hold on to its license. Warner had put into production an animated title, The Lord of the Rings, The War of Rohirrim, to meet its fulfillment, which Zance deemed insufficient. At any rate, Embracer has now taken over Zance's position and settled with the studio. Behind the scenes, Warner's film division, run by Pam Abadie and Michael DeLuca, has been striving to keep Amazon from blurring the lines too much between its Lord of the Ring franchises and the TV series, while the streamer took steps such as hiring movies composer Howard Shore to score its main title theme. Which leaves a key question moving forward. Is Middle Earth big enough for the ambitions of Warner and Amazon? Studio Insider suggests Warner's focus on Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and its recent signing of Akiva Goldsman and M. Night Shyamalan smack of nostalgia for the early 2000s. It's a sign of desperation. They want to make it seem like they're the studio of old one insider scoff. The Hobbit didn't leave people wanting more. Oh, don't they sound a little concerned that they're actually bringing people back who were able to deliver in the past, who actually have proven they can produce good content in the future, and they kind of know that people that were passionate about producing content in the past are not going to be producing woke garbage in the present or the future. According to newly released performance data, Amazon contends the debut season is the streamer's all-time most-watched series that Rings was seen in part by at least 100 million people, and that it drove more Prime Video signups than the company's four next biggest originals combined. Yet the show struggled for widespread fandom acceptance, and its mixed to positive critic reviews suggest that there was room for improvement. Showrunners Patrick McKay and J.D. Payne have acknowledged the ambitious show's startup stumbles and have pledged a bigger and better season two. Observers say that if Amazon is so bullish on Tolkien, it's curious the company didn't snatch up the Zants rights themselves to avoid all this and establish true Tolkien dominance. The sale closed just before the show launched. Some wonder if the studio will continue marching forward with its five season plan if the show's public perception doesn't notably improve. Once again, folks are emphasizing what's different. Warner's rights cover Tolkien's third age, which include fan favorite characters Gandalf, Aragorn, and the Hobbits, and covers the war over the One Ring, while Amazon is exploring Tolkien's lesser known second age. That creative decision presents challenges for both sides. Amazon has to make its epic series out of a period Tolkien wrote little about, while Warner's has to figure out how to make movies from a time whose best stories were covered by recent films. Unlike Marvel and DC, which lean on decades of stories from comic books or even Star Wars with its central tale and sprawling galaxy of vagueness to fill in, Tolkien's finest quality is his most vexing for adapters. The world is hugely detailed, yet mainly built to support two well-worn tales and even minor deviations from the lore spark fandom backlash. The result could leave two behemoth studios feeling like they're spending billions to fight over Tolkien's creative lemma's breadcrumbs. Well, that's interesting, but I can see why the people at Amazon are worried, even though they say they're not worried. This is from Variety, Amazon Studios boss Jennifer Salk, unfazed by Warner Brothers' new Lord of the Rings movies. We have enough fan love to sustain. Do fans really love the Amazon series? That'd be the first I heard of it. Looks like Middle Earth is big enough for everybody. At least that's how Amazon Studios head Jennifer Salk feels about Warner Brothers making competing projects based on J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. Salk, who held the top content job at Amazon since 2018, walked a Monday red carpet for the premiere of Michael B. Jordan's Creed 3, where she spoke with Variety about last week's news that Warner Brothers had secured film rights to some of Tolkien's books. One of Salk's defining moves at Amazon was to secure television rights 
to the same literary works, which she overpaid for tremendously, something like $250 million. The first season of Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power premiered in 2022 with a big global marketing push and critical acclaim, as well as reported budget north of $450 million for the first batch of episodes. Previously, Warner Brothers pushed out two massively successful film franchises with Peter Jackson beginning in 2001. Those films grossed over $5 billion at the worldwide box office and brought home a Best Picture Oscar for one of the entries. Will C. Sock told Variety when asked how much Lord of the Rings would be too much for the market. We love our original series. We're extremely proud of it and invested long term. So we definitely think there's enough fan love to sustain ours for a long time. The executive pedigree behind these projects is also noteworthy. Last March, Amazon acquired MGM in a deal valued at $8.5 billion. MGM's film operation was headed at the time by veteran producers Mike DeLuco and Pam Abney. Both executives left MGM shortly after the transaction closed to take a job running Warner Brothers Pictures. The Lord of the Ring news announced by Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff on the company's quarterly earnings call last week will be DeLuca and Abadie's first major franchise effort at their new studio home. On the call, Zaslav directly mentioned Amazon CEO Andy Jassy was pushing on the intellectual property with a lot of success. Salk, by the way, absorbed control of MGM's film, TV distribution, and marketing operations last November. Quote, for all the scope and detail lovingly packed into the two trilogies, the vast, complex, and dazzling universe dreamed up by J.R.R. Tolkien remains largely unexplored, DeLuca and Abity said upon announcing the new Warner Brothers films. Season 2 of Amazon's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, does not yet have a release date, though reports have suggested it will debut sometime in 2023. Well, let's look at it this way. This is what Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power is about. Here's an article from Paris. The women of the Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, are incredibly powerful. We're not serving a male storyline. So this is their whole obsession. Gender, ideology, wokeness. Compare that to people that are actually going to just focus on the quality of the brand and what people want in fandom. There's no satisfaction to the fandom of Lord of the Rings with the nonsense of what Amazon is doing. There's no way that you could put classic Lord of the Rings next to woke Lord of the Rings and have success for woke Lord of the Rings, not on their best day. It's going to make it look worse than it already is. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think that Zaslov is going to burn Amazon with his new Lord of the Rings? Or do you think that maybe Amazon will somehow keep up and be competitive with what they do at Warner Bros. Discovery? I just don't see how they do it when they have all that friction and all that nonsense and all that strangeness when they're just not focused on pleasing fans and they're just focused on pleasing themselves with their crazy ideology. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to see your comments. Really appreciate you taking the time to do that. All right, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.